pushing buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Well, welcome to Gun Funny episode 356. Today I'm going to chat with Lindsey Graham, aka the Patriot Barbie, discuss the circus of the presidential debate, and highlight a new stabby from Tecto Knives. I'm your host, Ava Flannell. Lindsay, how are you doing today? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm really excited to have you on. Before we start talking about everything that you do, real quick, want to take a break and talk about IWI. If you're looking for a new EDC, definitely check out the Masada Slim. It's basically between like uh, the P365, the P365 XL in terms of size. It has a 3.6 inch barrel. And like the other Masadas, it's optic ready right out of the box. It's compatible with the Shield optic footprint so that you can use the Holosyn 507K, the Romeo Zero and other similar slim micro dots. Sights are the same as the normal Masada. If you want to change them out, you can. It comes with a flat face trigger that's crisp and clean. No reset. They come with two 13-round mags or 10-round mags if you live in a restricted state. One of the really awesome things is that you can either get the full size or the slim for MSRP is four fifty, And then also one thing I do want to know is it's also compatible with full size Jericho mag. So it's just, it's a really great product that isn't going to cost an arm and a leg. And there's a lot of uses for it. Check it out. IWI.us. Don't forget to find something in their web store. They have a lot of cool stuff. Use the code gunfunny15, all one word, and you'll get 15% off your entire order. Learn the things you never knew on Deconstructing the Industry. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me today. I've actually wanted to get you on for a while, and I was always hesitant to ask because I'm like, you just look like you're so busy. And we were just talking before the show started. I'm like, I don't know, you might be busier than me because like, you know, I think you and I already, we share a lot in common and the fact that we're entrepreneurs. And I think you're like me and you're like, you know what, I'm going to take the, I'm going to go the extra mile and I'm going to make that my business, which is what I tend to do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. If it's a hobby, Hey, let's just make money on it. Why not? I I know exactly. Like (laughs) be smart about it. But for anybody who may not be familiar with, you know, with your name and what you do in this industry, can you just kind of give us a little breakdown? Sure. Yeah. So, um, I used to just be a uh, salon owner in Oregon, but I was an entrepreneur. I had six businesses in Oregon. And uh, when lockdowns hit America in March of 2020, I shut down my businesses and then quickly went into debt, realized that, you know, I didn't want the government to pay my bills. I didn't want the government to fund us to be shut down. So I opened up against mandates, was not political was not spiritual, was not the Patriot Barbie, like didn't realize that it would be controversial Mm -hmm. and literally just said, you know, I'm going to lose my livelihood if I don't work. So I, I'm going to work. I I think that that's my right opened up. It was global news, not because just because I opened up, but a, because I was probably one of the first in America, one of the first three and B the way that government targeted me when I opened up. So you know, threatening to take my kids, threatening to throw me in jail. So I overnight became this accidental, like conservative activist. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, um, as the story goes, Antifa targeted me, BLM targeted me. I ended up losing all my businesses to cancel culture in Oregon, was receiving death threats, was being slandered by the media, picked up my whole family, sold our house, sold our businesses, closed my salon, moved to Arizona and God called me into literally a life of activism, speaking the truth and just being a conservative, I guess, a conservative a voice. Yeah. So, and that's how I got the Patriot Barbie is the left labeled me the Patriot Barbie as an insult. And I was like, yeah, that's not really offensive. Yeah. So um, now, now they've created, they've created their arch nemesis. Yeah. I love it. 
Wow. I didn't know that you actually, so you, you ended up closing your business because of also because they, you know, they boycotted you. I thought that it ended up being successful and then you just decided to close it on your own, but no, that's crazy. No, they, yeah. It's a, it's a glory story. They, you know, they, they canceled us literally. Like, you know, people say cancel culture. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. they canceled us. We could not survive in Oregon. Everything we worked for, for 15 years down the drain in less than 60 days. Wow. Like the, from the time I opened May 5th, we had sold our house and moved to Arizona by September. Like wow. they had destroyed our businesses in, in, in two months. Wow. And then when you say it was just kind of a, like a call from God. So then what happened? You moved to Arizona and then what? I moved to Arizona, no job. So my husband and I both ran the businesses. We had no jobs, no promises of jobs, nothing lined up, mm -hmm. no security. You know, this was our retirement plan, all of these businesses. And I went through an identity crisis when we got down here because we lived for a while on just our kind of our savings or what, what we got selling the house in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't realize like who I was anymore because I was a very, very successful entrepreneur in Oregon, making a lot of money as a hairstylist, very well known in the community. Boss babe would be the term, right? That mm -hmm. I just thrived on. Yeah. When we got to Arizona, I was like, okay, I don't have a job. I don't have any businesses. What am I doing here? Like, I don't have an identity. And God called me to write my book, my first book, Targeted, which was, I thought, okay, I'm supposed to write a book about defying the government. That was like mm -hmm. <laughs> three months of my life. Like, that's not going to be a very good book. But when I sat down to write it, it was like me trying to tell the story of how I became this bold, aggressive, like I could withstand cancel culture kind of person. And I felt him calling me to write the stories of my past, you know, what I'd done in my 20s, some of the ways that he had created me and, and strengthened me and emboldened me. So I ended up writing over 300 page book and it was my testimony. But in writing that book, it wasn't about the book. I feel like it was about the Lord showing me this is your identity. Like I have allowed you to go through things in your life that have created you to be this person you are. I have a plan for you. And if you will just follow it, you are called to be the Patriot Barbie. I will, I will empower this calling. And so after writing that book, I was like, okay, I don't know what this looks like. I don't think there's money in being like a conservative voice, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to fall into my purpose. And I prayed a lot about it and I would just op go through open doors and, and try not to go through closed doors. And it's been four years of waking up every day and just trusting the Lord's plan for my life. Wow. I love it. And then yeah. from there, I'm assuming, did your book do well or were you like, okay, this doesn't pay the bills. Now I have to figure out something else as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you talk to any author, any author at all, other than maybe like the guy that wrote chicken soup for the soul, yeah, yeah. Made a living, you do not make money on books. You yeah. do not. So it's, it, it, no, it's definitely not been like a job to, to be an author. I give it away. Honestly, I tell people I give it away as much as I sell it because it's my, it's my testimony. So I'm like, I want people to read this. I mm -hmm. want them to be encouraged and see that like God does work in your life. So I wrote, you know, I wrote another book after that, a children's book, but it, these are all just callings. These are like the Lord telling me to do these things, whether they are profitable or not. So no, that book has not made me money. It's doing well. It's actually going to be, um, and that's going to be amazing, but no, I just, I, you know, I immerse myself in all kinds of stuff to try to make money <laughs> yeah. as lo along with freedom fighting. <laughs> yeah. So then what was, what did you do after that? After you wrote this book, then what? Gosh, I just kind of enjoyed my kids. I, I, I was like, I'm a stay at home mom, I guess, you know, and like, I'll go to events when I'm called, I'll speak when I'm called, but that's been, so that's been two, almost three years ago that I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's been just kind of one small step after another leading to really big, incredible things. I'm still in a place right now where I'm like, I still don't know what the Lord is doing, but I do keynote speaking now. And I've spoken with Charlie Kirk. I've spoken to huge audiences. I spoke at Trump International and got to meet Trump. I have multiple businesses now. Again, I'm an entrepreneur again, but this time, instead of just a business that makes money, it's more like I want to create a business that honors conservatives, that cannot be canceled, that feeds the parallel economy. Mm -hmm. So um, just this last year, I started diving into entrepreneurship again and really felt the Lord say, like, it's okay to do this 
this is what this is also part of your story but do it along with being a bold voice be unapologetic don't get distracted you still have a mission and make sure that that mission funnels everything to like the kingdom of heaven yeah so yeah i like it and honestly with everything going on especially with like you know the cancel culture and i'd say more than ever like in the last couple of years our country is incredibly divided you know, and people are very outspoken on both sides. But I will say that I've noticed, I mean, you know, the left seems to constantly try to cancel the right. And we mm-hmm. see it all the time. I mean, even being in the gun industry, you know, from merchant yeah. services to social media, like anything that, you know, if you show anything that even though it's legal and you are doing things legally, they just they want to shadow ban you or they don't yep. want to bank with you or any of that. So I think it is important to have people like you, you know, speaking for some of those people who aren't as well spoken or as loud and kind of putting their foot down. Because I mean, at this point, it's like, when is enough enough? Yeah. And it's, it's not easy to be bold and outspoken because no. if you, if you talk to, you know, I mean, I, if you talk to or watch Americans, they have opinions, but if they say them, they're afraid of losing their job or losing mm-hmm. their family or their friends or opportunities. And so it's been one of the greatest gifts of my life to have been canceled and understand I'm not subject to anyone. I can say whatever I want and there is no one that can tell me, well, you're fired or we're not going to work with you. Can't be canceled because I already was. And so, so many people were like, oh my gosh, you lost everything. And the truth is I did. I lost a lot. I mean, I lost a lot, but if I hadn't, I wouldn't have the freedom to talk about the things that I talk about now. Yeah, And freedom is the most important thing that we can have. Mm -hmm. So I have no regrets. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why I became self-employed and that I love it because there's nobody, I don't have to like get called into HR. Like, what did you do again? What did you say? Yeah. yeah. So it's nice. But even if, let's face it, even if we didn't have anybody that could fire us at the same time, it's still hard to be outspoken because of a lot of the backlash and, you know, all these people, like they'll come after you. And I'm sure, you know, you probably get it even worse than I do. But I mean, even personally, I have, I've gotten death threats for, you know, standing up for what I believe in and speaking my mind. So I can only imagine like what you get. And, you know, I, I think it gets better over time. Like eventually you just grow thicker skin, but it's definitely something that's not easy. And so anybody who is doing stuff like that, like really like, sticking to their guns and, you know, and standing their ground is very admirable. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the most amazing thing that I can do now is use my platform to like come alongside those people, right? Like you Mm -hmm. were saying, especially gun companies when now like companies that have merch that says something that, you know, Etsy doesn't like or PayPal doesn't like. When we launched Pretty Little Patriot, which is just a women's fashion brand, like, but the name has Patriot in it. We got suspended from PayPal for a month because when you're online, it's like Mm -hmm. you have to use these other payment processors that everybody knows and uses and makes everyone's life easy. But they suspended us for a month and they held all of our money until we would jump through their hoops. And I was like, you're not doing this for these other leftist woke companies, right? So it kind of triggered something in me like, man, we need a payment processor in the parallel economy. So like that's an example of something where I don't have any authority in payment freaking processing. Like what, where would this come from? But yet again, God opens these amazing doors and they come through people. They come through relationships. And I developed a relationship with this guy, Derek, who is a payment processing agent here in Arizona and super patriot, loves the Lord, a family man. And he's like, we got to get some of these businesses. He heard my story. We got to get some of these businesses the ability to process and know that we're not going to cancel you, like no matter what you sell, no matter what you say. So we formed a partnership where not only because I told him, again, no authority in payment processing, I'll promote this. I think we need it. It's really important, but we got to do something like that's sort of in ministry as well, or like that gives back to America, right? Mm -hmm. So we refer these high risk gun companies and Trump companies and patriotic companies to process with us and we do the underwriting in advance. So there's no way we're going to come back later and go, just kidding, you're, you're, you know, you're denied. But then we ask those companies, 
what nonprofit do you want to donate back to? Because we will donate 5% of our proceeds back to any nonprofit that aligns with our values, right? We're not going to let you pick Mm -hmm. freaking Planned Parenthood. (laughs) You could pick a veterans company. You could pick a pro-life company. You could pick, you know, a freedom company, whatever, back the blue. And we donate 5% back to that nonprofit on behalf of the business. So they're not just saving money. They're not just being cancel free. They're now saying, Hey, we all like we're processing with a company that gives back to America too. It's, and like, that's just something I never would have expected. Mm-hmm. If you go through something that I went through and go, okay, Lord, what's the next step? And he were to say payment processing, I'd be like, Nope, <laughs> you yeah. picked the wrong girl, yeah. but it's about the platform. Like yeah. he gave me a platform and I have 309,000 followers on Instagram And it's like, what am I going to do with that besides brand deals and making money? That's not what it's about. I want to make a difference. And this is something I'm like, I will promote this because our fellow patriots need to hear it. And I want to give back to these companies, these organizations, these foundations that I believe in. It's like, it's so random. And yet that's the kind of weird stuff that God does in my life. Yeah. I get it. Um, And I think it's also really important that people, if, if anybody has a business, it's important to pick a merchant service that does align with your values. Because Mm -hmm. now that I've gotten more into politics and uh, recently started, you know, my journey in Colorado with the Independent Expenditure Committee, it's crazy. I'm like, I'm looking at all of these companies and corporations that have donated to Democrats. And it is like, we're talking about like Amazon, like some of these like really big companies, what is it? DoorDash, uh, yep. like just stuff um, like I, that. I, I'm like, Canva, what? Vistaprint, like yeah. dude, you name it. It's like, they all went woke and you're like, you have nothing to do with the culture. That's, Can you I just, know. Like, be quiet. I know. I'm yeah. like, why would you even take a stand for that? Like, exactly. it's just, it's just, yeah. It blows my mind. I went to a restaurant the other day and there were signs that say like, protect kids, not guns, something about transgender oh stuff, uh, respect my pronouns, you know, all this stuff. I ended up walking out. But Good. I thought to myself, why would a restaurant do this? Like if I owned a right. restaurant as, you know, as somebody who's very business minded, why would you even try to, you know, try to turn any anyone off, especially with the way that the economy is? I have to imagine that there's not a lot of people going out to dinner or lunch these days. So why would you do that to your business? And yet all of these companies are just, you know, choosing sides. But it's insane the amount of money that they're donating to Democrats so that they can, you know, win these districts or elections and all that. Yeah. And it's so it's so true what you say about I love that you use your restaurant as an example. It's like people just want to come in and eat yeah how do you need to have a political you can have a political opinion you can have it on your instagram i don't think we should cancel people with that yeah but why are you making your restaurant about it i know you're alienating honestly more than half the country because i swear that more than half the country now is like you guys are psycho Mm -hmm. yep absolutely i agree Lindsay. i'm going to take a quick break and talk about gideon optics Gideon has released the new version of the Guardian LPVO. The Guardian 1 to 8 by 24 LPVO is similar to the 1 to 10, but has some key differences. It has a front focal plane instead of a second focal plane reticle. The front focal plane, mouthful, (laughs) reticles are more difficult to make and have the benefit of the drop holds in the reticle being correct at every power zoom. The 1 to 8 Guardian has a 30 millimeter tube and the scope has a Horus or rather Christmas tree style reticle, but it also has a bracketing grid for fast acquisition as well. You'll have to look at it. It looks great for long range as well as close range as well. It has a really nice push pull locking turrets and 140 MOA of adjustment on windage and elevation. It has 11 brightness settings powered by a 2032 battery. Right now, they are in stock for just $469, but remember to use the code GUNFUNNY, all one word, and you're going to get 10% off your entire order, and that is GideonOptics.com. Let's talk about some of the other stuff that you do because you have your hands in so much. So let's talk about Pretty Little Patriot. I saw when you guys started this, which was not even a year ago, right? Yeah, nine months ago. Okay. And you were like, all right, we just, you know, we had this idea and we're going to do it. And like, it just Mm -hmm. seemed like this whole thing happened overnight. 
And you guys, you know, created this brand with really cute clothing. And it was you and your best friend that did it, right? Yep. And then you guys just, I mean, tell me a little bit about that and that process that it took. Yeah. It's so funny because I met with a, a social marketer, or not a social, a digital, digital marketer yesterday. Mm-hmm. And he was asking questions like, you know, what's your ROI and what's this and what's this? And I was like, I don't know, dude, we just, we just wanted cute clothes for chicks. Like I haven't, yeah. <laughs> I haven't done any of that. He's like, you don't know that it wasn't ROI. It was something, it was something I didn't even know. Yeah. And I was like, dude, we saw a need in the parallel economy, and we met it. but it's true. Like we were at a turning point event, having a glass of wine in the VIP area, looking around going, all these girls were in the cutest stuff. I bet you they all got it at fucking Sheen, right? Or some other company that some changes like China their brands. logo to rainbow yeah. in June. Yeah. And because you wear it for one event, so you want it to be cheap and you want it to be glittery and whatever. Yeah. So like, dude, someone needs to make a fashion brand that's just like boldly out there, like freaking patriotic, you know, pro woman. And so we came up with, I'd already actually owned the name Pretty Little Patriot. Like again, one of those weird things, right? God yeah. just gave me that that name one day and I went and got the website and I got the Instagram and I just saved it. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. So we just started immediately like the logo. We designed the logo on a napkin in the bar that night. We had the name. We we went to work and it, it's crazy how it has it has gone through its ups and downs. And I I honestly can just attribute that to like a spiritual war because when you're doing something that's going to have an effect and it's going to to be like life changing for yourself and maybe for others, the devil does not want it to happen. Mm-hmm. So we have gone through severe ups and downs with this. Like we're not going to make it. Our bank account is depleted mm-hmm. to like having the biggest month ever the next month. It's crazy. We actually had our biggest month ever during Pride Month when we literally countered the Pride the Pride movement. Yeah, but it's it's cute stuff. It's for the you know for the most part. I know everyone has their own stinking opinions. It's very conservative. But then there are girls who are like, "Your back shows that's not conservative." And I'm like, "Well, it is to me." So you can have your opinion, but it's <laughs> it's pretty conservative. Yeah. Um, it's respectful. It's tasteful. It's feminine. And we just, we have it on our website. We stand for the traditional family. We stand for life. We stand for freedom. We stand for the constitution. And our logo is an XX chromosome. Like only women can wear these clothes. And it is amazing how God is blessing our business because of, you know, we're not just building a brand and like, you know, going to throw it on anybody and let anybody promote it. You have to align with our values and and our values are important to us and we're not going to cower from them. Mm -hmm. And it's been very well accepted. So it's, nice. uh, it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I'm actually just looking at your website and I'm like, oh, ah, you you're like, oh that. I'm yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And then let's talk about some of the other stuff that you're doing. I'm like, where do we even, let's talk about my freedom cart. Okay. Yeah. That, that one is, oh my gosh, that one's amazing. Again, it's, it's totally social marketing. Never thought I'd be involved in something like that. But because of my platform, there's so many aspects to it. I'm able to refer people to something I believe in. But but along with that, and this is going to sound so cheesy and cliche, but I have women on my team and they send me those text messages like, this has changed my life. Being a part of your team has changed my confidence. I can't believe that I'm so successful with this. I never would have thought. And I'm like, yeah, me too, sister. I hear you. But, you know, it's so what it is, is it's one manufacturer in Idaho. Everything is made in America. Everything. The only thing not made in America is the mascara wand. It's made in Italy. Like literally that's it. But you, it's an online shopping club that you join. You pay $19 a year and you get these products for extremely affordable, cheaper than Amazon. Everything's concentrated. Everything's toxic free. Everything's made in America. You buy online every month and it comes to your front door. I call it the conservative Amazon. And I was an Amazon addict. So my big call to action is, of course, ditch Amazon, Mm -hmm. right? And we can't completely ditch Amazon. This store doesn't sell everything. It doesn't sell shoes or hands or clothes, but it sells everything that you need for your home. So vitamins, supplements, snacks and coffee, skincare, makeup, Mm -hmm. um, toiletries, toothpaste, hair care, like everything you need for your family that's reusable and consumable. And so 
to me, it was like, I was getting that stuff on Amazon and to make my life easier, I had it all on subscribe and save. Right. Yeah. So my laundry soap, dish soap, toothpaste, body wash, my husband and I, and my kids and I, we use all that stuff every month and we need it. So I'm mm-hmm. like, great, ship it to my door just without me even thinking about it. It shows up. Great. You can do the same thing with this company, except a massive conservative owns it. He's one of the biggest Republican donors in the country. And it's all, again, all toxic free made in America. So I'm like, hmm. okay, how could I not use my platform to be a referral partner for this? Yeah, There's a massive stigma around the, like, is it an MLM? Is it this? I don't want to build a business. I'm like, I'm not asking you to build a business. I'm just asking you to shop your values. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Ditch exactly. Amazon, shop here instead. And the result is astounding. Uh, I mean, astounding. I have one of the biggest, I, I am, I'm going to have, because I just started like a year ago, one of the biggest teams in the entire company. I've been the number one referral partner. I've been their number one referral partner. And then I've been the number two referral partner and in the country, which is insane. But it's like, I believe in this. I personally use every single product on the store. I do not buy any of my toiletries at big box stores anymore Mm -hmm. or Amazon. We use everything that I endorse. So I, I, you know, that's one of the things I do. I practice what I preach. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I can use my social media to tell people to do this and then bless the women that are on my team because they help me, they get, they get my referrals. I'm not greedy. I'm not selfish. This isn't all about me. It's about blessing people around me too. So we're, we're wildly successful. And there's a reason like the company has been around 35 years, they have a 92% retention rate, which means that once people start shopping, 92% of them stay yeah. for like 30 years or however yeah. long. So that's amazing. And that's been a huge blessing for my life and having a team around me to help me do that and stuff like that. So Yeah, I like that because you're right. Like even I'm guilty of shopping at Amazon still and I hate myself for it because yeah. it's like, well, you know, even your schedule gets crazy. You're like, I really need coffee filters. I don't have time to just run to the store. And so yes. you're like, I could just order it. Amazon Prime. Cool. It's going to be there the next morning. And that's way exactly. easier. Yep. And, and they, they've, that's, they've lived off of like making people's life convenient. Mm-hmm. That's what they get on. Yeah. Yep. But I hate it because I know that Amazon is huge. Like there's such a proponent in donating towards, you know, towards the left. And it's like, mm-hmm. I don't want to support them. And then you're like, well, I'll just go to the store. Well, Target also supports them. Yep. Like, exactly. It's it's like, it's getting to the point where it's like, well, where can I spend my money? Because I don't even know which companies I can trust anymore. Exactly. And, yep. you know, and I'm telling you, like, especially with funding and stuff, I mean, funding definitely plays a large role as to who typically gets elected. And so it is really smart to put your money, you know, where it is ultimately affecting your life. So exactly. Yep. Well, so like you think about, okay, if you go on Amazon every month and buy your laundry soap and your dish soap, not only is it like literally probably giving, I'm, I'm just going to say it's probably giving you cancer. I don't oh, know. I know. There's, probably. That's like, another thing is there's <laughs> so much toxins in everything. Yeah, yeah. We cannot trust the government to monitor. Our no, products. absolutely like, that's not. not. Yeah. Absol- yeah. Yeah. So if anybody so wants but, to, if anybody yeah. wants to do this, they would just go, it's called myfreedomcart.com. Yep, that's so your they, website. Yep, go to myfreedomcart.com. And if they want to do slash Patriot Barbie, typically if they do myfreedomcart.com slash Patriot Barbie, I will personally reach out to them. So, okay, yeah. cool. Awesome. Yeah. And then also one thing that I did see you talking about online, which I thought was really important, actually, is you mentioned, you know, like having like body dysmorphia and... Mm. You know, and I saw like there was a few people that made fun of you because they're like, oh, she's filled with Botox. I mean, I personally, I've I've been very open about it in the past. Like I've gotten Botox just because it's preventative, right? Like I've noticed that I have these little lines on my forehead. I'm like, you know, I'll get some Botox in there and then I don't make those facial expressions anymore. And even when my Botox wears off, I'm like, wow, I don't really have those lines anymore. For me, it's like more preventative. But then I've also gotten filler in my lips before, which didn't look the best. It's gone away now. But (laughs) (laughs) but I mean, it's still I I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. But I do think that we might be living in a society where a lot of women are like, well, maybe, you know, maybe I'm not that pretty if I'm not getting that stuff done, or if I don't feel you know, and, and so I thought that that was kind of nice of you to even be vulnerable and open yourself up and, and say that stuff, because mm-hmm. most of us would look at you and think like, no, you don't suffer from body dysmorphia and more, more people. So wouldn't even know what that is. Right. 
right. because it doesn't even seem like that's we live in such a world where it's like, oh, nobody talks about that. But do you want to share a little bit about that, like your story? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I've been in the salon and just I was in the salon industry for 15 years. So you can imagine just having access to that kind of stuff all the time. Fillers, Botox, skincare treatments, which, you know, skincare treatments are amazing. I even had an injectionist in my salon working for like four years. So I was just, I would just get treatments whenever I wanted. It was a, you, you look at these women that are like overfilled, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, overfilled to where you're like, you don't look natural. Like a human. Anymore. Like you, like, yeah. you don't look natural. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That's an understatement. Like you look screwed up, botched. Yeah. yeah. But that happened slowly. That did not happen. She didn't walk in and do that and go, oh my gosh, uh, look, I look great. Because no one would, Mm-mm. right? You would you would think, well, that's what body dysmorphia is. Some of these women, you're like, do you look in the mirror? Do you see what we see? And the answer is no, I don't. I don't see what you see. And I had gotten to a point where I was filling my lips and I look back now and I'm like, oh my gosh, where were my friends? Those look horrible. But I was so body dysmorphic. I didn't see... Like the diff, I had gotten it done so slowly. Mm-hmm. I didn't see the difference from when I didn't have anything in there. And then when I had way too much and I was, I'm still, I'm still, it just doesn't, this doesn't go away. I, I, I have body dysmorphia. So, but I had started. Okay. So I had started praying about it. That was the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Lord, this is like a weird hobby for me. Like I am always altering my face. I'm always looking in the mirror and going, I can improve that. I can improve that. Well, all I got to do is go see an esthetician, pay them a bunch of money and they'll fix, they'll fix it, quote, fix it. Right. And I was fixing and fixing and fixing until I started praying. This can't be normal for me to like, it was to the point where I was like filling an area and then being like, Oh, I don't like that. Dissolve it. And then I dissolve it. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I do want it back. I mean, like you do not look in the mirror and see, no, honey, you're you're fine. Just leave your face alone. Like Mm -hmm. no one else is judging you the way you're judging yourself. But especially being on Instagram with people that use filters and all of that, right? Guilty as charged. You look at those people and you expect to look like that normal. Well, when I use a filter, I'm like, oh, I'm perfect. It's a, it's a filter. It's mm-hmm. altered my face to be exactly what I want it to be. And then you take the filter off and you're like, I'm hideous. Well, if we lived in a culture where women weren't using filters, we wouldn't be comparing ourselves to those filters. Yeah. I wouldn't be comparing myself to myself filtered. But I started praying, okay, Lord, I can't keep going on like this. I'm messing with my face. I don't even look like the person you created me to be. I don't want to look in the mirror and wish I would change. Mm-hmm. I don't want to look in the mirror and and wish I looked different or or fine. Can you just let me see myself as the beautiful daughter that you see me as? And that prayer worked because guess what happened? I had filler in my face, in my lips, jawline, chin, cheekbones, like you name it. Mm-hmm. I had filler. When I prayed the prayer, Lord, help me to see myself as beautiful as you see me. What he did was exactly what I asked. I would look in the mirror and all of a sudden I hated my filler. I hated my jawline. I hated my chin. I hated my lips because that wasn't who he created me to be. Mm -hmm. So he did answer my prayers. I didn't say, Lord, can you help me hate this stuff? So I'll go dissolve it. But that's what he did because he said, you said you wanted to look at yourself and love yourself. I love you as I created you. And so I had this new esthetician and they were like, what do you want to do? And I was like, this is crazy, but I kind of want to try to look natural again. Mm-hmm. And they were like, we will walk you through that. We don't want to just dissolve everything or you, your space might suck. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. So let's just start kind of taking stuff away and see what happens. And so I started taking stuff away, dissolving, which is a thing. You can literally inject a dissolver in your lips and it'll it'll take the filler out. It'll like melt it. Mm-hmm. I started doing that and I was like, Lord, please don't let me start immediately judging like how tiny my lips are or how, you know, small my chin is. And it was, it's been a literal miracle. I've dissolved my jawline, my chin and my lips. And for the most part, I am very, very close to looking like how God created me with maybe a few alterations. 
and I love it. I feel beautiful. I see myself as beautiful, even, even with the imperfection. So I can still look in the mirror now and go, yeah, I wish my chin jetted out a little bit more. Cause it's like kind of like I have a, a non, a non neck. Yeah. I judge things like that still. No, I, I know. But that's the thing is like, we're our biggest, you know, like you would yes. judge stuff that nobody else. Cause I'll point yeah. out stuff to my friends and they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, you don't I, notice this like I, from my crazy? profile, you don't see that, you know, I have a double chin and they're like, no. Oh my and, gosh. You know, yeah. and so it's like, yeah, we, uh, everything that you're saying makes a lot of sense. Mm. And that, so my ability now is that I can, I can look in the mirror. I can be like, yeah, my lips are a little skinny now, whatever. Yeah. Like my chin kind of doesn't stick out from my neck, whatever. And be, be like, but that's okay. Yeah. Because I, I think that I'm beautiful as, as God created me. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I really do think, I know it's, it's so stupid to say like, people are like, oh, that's bullshit. But like, I do think that there's a lot to be said about having internal beauty and that that is so much more important than the external mm-hmm. beauty. I mean, it does help to look decent, right? But, yeah, you know, the older I get, the more I'm like, wow, that person's just like a really beautiful person. And I think when you're beautiful inside and you like love yourself, that just shines through. And it's same with like yeah. confidence, right? Like, you know, a really hot guy could walk through the door and if he doesn't have the confidence, it just you're not like you're not looking at him versus the guy right. who's maybe not that great looking, but he's like, yeah. he walks in and he has all this confidence. You're like, damn, that's like really attractive. Yeah, exactly. So yep. yeah, but I'm, well, and I you. think too, this is my own, like, this is my own thought process. I don't know if there's any science to it or accuracy whatsoever, but I think that we do see, we do see people's inner light. So the more I am filled with like Jesus and love and the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. the more I feel like people look, they see that because I've had people say, and of course, I'm I'm trying to say this with all humility. I've had people say to me very, very often, almost every single time I meet a follower in real life, they'll say to me, oh, you're, you're even prettier in real life. And I'm like, well, how could that be? Because like I use filters every now and then on Instagram and I make sure I'm at the right angle and all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like... That is the light of Jesus. That's my personality. That's that's who you feel inside because now you're with me in person mm-hmm. and the love of Jesus is in me. That's what I think is you see me as as pretty because you also see like God in me, mm-hmm. n- not just me. Yeah. And, and so I don't know. I have this theory that like, again, like you said, when you're a beautiful person on the inside, that affects how people view and perceive you yeah. externally. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I feel like I could talk to you forever, um, <laughs> but we're going to move on to other segments. But before I do, can you just share like maybe just stuff that you have, you know, planned for the future and then also all of those links to all those places, everything that you have your hands in, which I'm assuming you have one website that's going to make it a lot easier. But yes, if not, go ahead yes. and go ahead and start naming them all off. <laughs> yeah. So the best place is patriotbarbie.com. Um, because my fashion brand is on there, my merch store, my freedom cart is linked. This is all under like my shop page. Patriot Adventures is linked. Everything is there. And then if you follow me on Instagram, it's the.patriot.barbie. All of my links are in my launch links in my bio as well. So all right, perfect. that's the uh, that's the money right there. Perfect. Moving forward with the rest of the show. So Mantis, if you haven't checked out the Blackbeard X yet, you definitely need to. It gives you the capability of the Mantis X along with the trigger reset of the Blackbeard so that you don't have to keep racking the charging handle on your AR for every shot. And there's also a version for the SIG MCX. In addition to the normal analysis, it also gives you analysis based on your movement. It tracks your delay to get on target, and it gives you metrics on how you could increase your speed without affecting accuracy. It shows you how much you over travel on target transitions and the path of transition. All of these go together to help you get faster and more accurate. You can also compare your progress or you can compare it to a friend's. So check it out as well as many of their other products at mantisx.com. Politics. What is going on in the world today? It's political AF. 
today in politics. So the sad state of politics, whether you watched the presidential debate last week or not, you've almost certainly seen clips from it showing just how sad and pathetic politics in America have become. Anyone who has ever helped take care of an elderly relative knew that Joe Biden had a few screws loose in his brain four years ago. Now it's blatantly obvious to everyone that he is, you know, that he's not mentally there. In spite of being advised up front of every question and softballed by the debate host, every response made it clear that any mental faculties Joe ever had are gone. Essentially, I would say it's, you know, it's elderly abuse, which we've heard time and time again. Every response, he struggled to form simple sentences and constantly mixed up issues so badly that nothing made sense. Trump remarked after one of his particularly jumbled and incoherent rambling about beating Medicare that he said, quote unquote, well, I don't know what he said, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't either. And I actually reposted that on my Twitter because I just kind of started laughing. <laughs> um, but anyway, so surprisingly, even like CNN, a lot of these, uh, even the media is kind of, you know, they've been discussing how Biden needs to be replaced with a new candidate because of his performance. So it's pretty crazy. Like even when CNN openly talks about it, you know that they're scared. Reportedly, Biden met with family and close advisors to discuss the future of his campaign on Sunday. Obviously, that included Obama, who has you know, long been known to be the key person pulling Biden's strings. Right now, many are speculating that Michelle Obama might be his replacement. Others think that it could be Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer. Jill Biden said Joe did so good. He answered every question. (laughs) Um, So anyways, a long story short, I don't know. It's a really difficult situation. And I think that they know this as well. So legally removing Biden from the ballot in swing districts, like if they did replace him. So swing districts such as Georgia, Nevada and Wisconsin at this point would effectively prevent anyone from replacing him at this stage of the election cycle. Rhino Chip Roy of Texas is apparently coming to Democrats' rescue, though. He's proposing a resolution of the 25th Amendment to declare Biden mentally unable to perform his duties, Mm -hmm. which would put Kamala Harris in the White House and allow replacing Biden on the ballot. So I guess we'll see how things go. But as of right now, it looks like they aren't planning on replacing him. But that said, I've been reading a bunch of stuff and it's crazy because even though Biden's performance was so bad and I I personally didn't watch it. I checked out some of the clips. My cousin was she just got back from Qatar and then was here for one night and then was uh, moving to New Jersey. So I wanted to spend the evening with her. We went out to dinner, so I didn't have a chance to watch it. But even that, like I, I saw a lot of the clips and I was just like, oh, my God, this is horrible. And and I will say, like, I almost kind of felt bad for Biden because, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, we're always taught to, like, respect our elders. And it was just like, man, this guy, like, just get him to a an old age home and like let him enjoy what's left of his life. Yeah. Other people, when I said that, they were like, no, he's evil. He deserves it all. But I mean, I think we all know at this point he's just a puppet, but it just sucks because they need to find a puppet that could at least reiterate what he's supposed to say and the answers <laughs> that they went over. And uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Like, it's just. Oh There's so much. There's so much. First of all, I love how savage Trump was without seeming like hateful and aggressive, <laughs> right? Like, I don't, but, I don't even know what he said. And I don't think he knows what he said. <laughs> yeah. It's just very like, we all know that this guy, it's basically he's like, we all know that this guy has talked like this for the last two years, but mm-hmm. moving on, right? Like it's so stupid to even point it out. But oh my gosh. So everything that Joe Biden has done his entire life, say on one side, oh, he's evil. He deserves it. He he probably is evil, yeah. right? Like we know that he molested and assaulted his own daughter. Like mm-hmm. we know this. She yeah. she wrote a diary and it's been proven and it's it is in evidence, right? Of course they're suppressing that. So we know that he's a horrible person. So does he deserve the punishment of being paraded around on national TV and like made a fool? Maybe, maybe he does. Yeah. But he's so senile now that he doesn't even know that he's being why, made he, fun why of. he deserves it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I totally agree. Like part of me is like this guy, he deserved to be punished 10, 20 years ago when mm-hmm. he was able to comprehend being punished. Yeah. Now, it really is like I've tried to I've tried to tell people before really get a grasp on what dementia is like. Ava, it's like you and me doing this podcast and then I snap my fingers and you wake up and you're 10 years younger mm-hmm. and you're at you're going where am I? Well, where am I? 
And they're so confused. Could you imagine how scary that is? I know. This guy is up on stage with all these cameras and these lights, and he's being fed these lines, obviously. And he somehow manages to say some of them. And then he probably blinks and is like, I have no idea where I'm at, mm-hmm. but I know that everybody's staring at me. How horrible of a person is everybody around everybody around him so that they can just use him as a pawn for whatever it is that their big grand scheme is, which yeah. is taking over America and making it a communist country. Yeah, exactly. So I see both sides. Like he does deserve to suffer, but now I feel like he's so seen out. He doesn't even know what he's being punished for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I know it's crazy. And also I think what's even crazier is a lot of people were, you know, under uh, a lot of this news, even under these clips, a lot of people were like, you know, vote blue. They kept, you know, doesn't matter. Oh I'd still vote for Biden. I'm like, are you guys idiots? Like, and also, is nobody even going to mention that, like, this is the guy that is running America right now. And if we are questioning whether he has the mental stability to be our president, he is the president. So, like, that's even more alarming. Yeah. And and then oh also, gosh. if you look at clips from, like, you know, let's say, like, the last time he debated a few years ago, I mean, it is night and day. Like, this guy has just gone downhill very quickly. And I have in question, you know, if he does become president, like, is he going to last another four years? Mm, I don't. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, you know how people can go full conspiracy, right? And like, mm-hmm. oh, they planned this. Now they wanted to make him look yeah. terrible so that they could, you know, like you're saying, bring in Kamala or whoever. Gavin Newsom is. Yeah. Name. I'm like, that makes sense. I mean, we only see what they want us to see. This yeah. whole thing is just ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous. You, you can't possibly be on Joe Biden's team. And be like, no, I think he's, I think he's competent. I think he's sound. Like, you know what you're doing. You know, this guy is senile. You know, he's not going to make it through this debate. So why would you even agree to it? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you just nominate someone else? They allowed this to happen. I honestly think they allowed it to happen so that they can say, oh, no, we made the best decision for America. That's who we are. We decided our country needs better. So we're going to endorse someone who's competent. Oh, no, you're the heroes. Create the problem and then solve it, right? Yeah. They're pretending that this problem is brand new and that they're going to solve it for us. Yeah, exactly. That's what I think. That's what I think. This segment is brought to you from Rose by Sig Sauer. This week with Sig Rose, I do not have an interview to share with you guys. Instead, I wanted to update you on the Rose seminar schedule because I know a lot of people would love to meet Lena and they have seminars going on all over the country. They're halfway through, obviously, the year, but there's still a lot that you guys can still attend. So the next one takes place September 21st at Alley Outdoors in Midland, Texas. And if you guys are interested in attending these, I would recommend contact Alley Outdoors. See if you have to sign up or if it's just one of these things that you could just show up to. Next is October 26th at Triangle Shooting Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. Then there is November 9th at Poe. Poway Weapons and Gear Range in San Diego, California, which I love that they are including California in their tour because I actually have realized that there's a lot of people in California that like guns. I think the top three states that listen to the podcast are actually California. Maybe they're living vicariously through me. Who knows? But don't let you know, their politics fool you. There's definitely a lot of gun owners and gun enthusiasts in California. And then there's November 16th at Downrange Indoor Training Center at Chico, California. And then lastly, wrapping up the year is September 6th, Adventure Outdoors in Smyrna, Georgia. And like I said, if you guys are interested in attending, just hit up those facilities that are hosting these events and then ask them for more information. Also, if you guys want to find this information for yourselves, head on over to sigsour.com forward slash rose. And then at the top of the page, you will see where it says rose seminar schedule. Also, and a few things that I want to add to that is I heard that the next rose retreat is underway. I haven't been given any details. I don't know when it's going to happen, where it's taking place, but I did see a few you know, a few details about it. And if you guys are thinking that you want to attend the retreat, which as we can tell from a lot of these interviews, it seems to be very life-changing. It's just a really great opportunity. 
I would recommend that you join the Rose Community Facebook group. And you do not have to own a P365 Rose or even a SIG product. All you have to do is just be a female. Be a female. You could join the Facebook group. Just search for Rose Community. You could tell them that I sent you. Just say, hey, I heard from you guys on Gun Funny Podcast, which would actually help me out quite a bit. And they will accept you into the group. And in this group, I love it because it's just women helping each other. It's women sharing their targets from when they went shooting. And, you know, and sometimes they'll ask for, you know, some tips. It's women sharing different types of holsters that they found to work really well for them. It's women sharing you know, even talking about like news and politics and stuff. So it's just a really great community of women. Some women, this is, you know, they only have one gun or they don't even own a gun and they just want to get their feet wet. There's some actually really big names in that group as well, where you can pick their brain and, you know, and, and kind of get some tips from them as well. But it's just a really good community. And I would highly recommend joining it. And then also, it seems to me that that's where they're going to post the retreat info first before they tell the public. And if you guys are not familiar with what the Rose by Sig Sauer is, it's more than just the P365, 380 and 9mm firearm. Although I will say that when you do purchase that gun, you get more than just that gun. It's an entire package. You have a locking device, snap cap, speed loader, training from Lena, but it's just become more than just the firearm itself. It's really become a community of women. And I couldn't be more proud to, to be lined up with them. If you guys want to find out more information about the firearm though, or where you can purchase it again, visit sigsour.com forward slash rose. And then you can compare, you know, the difference between the 380, the nine millimeter, the nine millimeter has a compensator, the 380 doesn't. So you can kind of just compare and figure out exactly what gum would be more ideal for you. And then there's also a bunch of merchandise and they are constantly adding more merchandise. I mean, just everything, cleaning kits, clothes, water bottles, all kinds of stuff. So check it out, sigsour.com forward slash rose. Tactic Talk, discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. Today in Tacti Talk, Tecto Knives releases the Spry Mini. And I'm hopefully I'm saying that right. I don't know if it's Spree or Spry. Maybe it's Spree. If you guys follow me on social media, a lot of you guys have seen that I've been getting into knives lately, kind of just for an extra element of concealed carry. So finding a quality knife has been kind of difficult, especially one that doesn't break the bank. But I have been really impressed with Tecto knives. They just came out with their new Out the Front and OTF knife. That's a great fit. It's the A5 Spry Mini, and it's a scaled down version of its bigger brother, but it seems to fit in your hand a lot better. So they also make this knife called the Badger, and that seems to be really popular. So I think they were thinking, all right, why don't we take the A5 and make a mini one because the A5 was very popular, but some people just want that knife for concealed carry. And with it being compact, it makes it that much easier to conceal. The button is on the side, so it works if you're right-handed, left-handed. The handle is made out of the rugged 6061 T6 aluminum, and the blade is S35VN steel coated in titanium and a blade hardness of 60 to 62. It also has an integrated tungsten steel glass breaker if you ever find yourself in a bind and have to break that glass, like if you were in a vehicle or something. You can get them with dual edge dagger blades, drop point, or tonto in black or OG green, which is the one that I have. The blade comes in at 1.8 inches long and the handle is a little bit larger for a nice grip at 3.2 inches. They have a clip on the side for pocket carry. And as you guys may or may not know, out the front knives can be illegal in some states. Don't ask me why it's literally just like all the laws, very stupid. Um, but Tecto has a link of a handy guide on state knife laws so that you can make sure that you're good to go in your state. Check it out. A bunch of other knives, tectoknives.com. And if you use the code AF10, all one word, that's AF as an Ava Flanell, one zero, you'll get 10% off.
Gators Eye Pro. So funny story about gators. Uh, just the other day, I was paddle boarding, which I try to do every few weeks when I have the time. Uh, so gators, uh, I might have shared this on previous episodes, but they were like, you know what, just take lifestyle pictures. You don't always have to be on the range. And that's easy to do because I always wear their frames. Yesterday, I went paddle boarding and I noticed that there were some bubbles coming out of my paddle board in the water. And that's because there was a leak. And it wasn't huge, but it was definitely making my board inflate fairly quickly. But before I decided to go ashore, which just so you guys know, I wasn't really risking my safety. I was in a smaller lake. I'm pretty sure I could have stood up in it if I wanted. But before I went to shore, I was like, nope, I got to get this lifestyle picture. And so, of course, I got a picture with my Gators iPro and then my, you know, stand up paddle board. But kind of funny, my friends are like, you're crazy. And I'm like, well, this is the life of a content creator. Anyways, but I just shared that I shared that story with the guys at Gators and they laughed. But yeah, so anyways, Gators has so many different frames coming out, including the rig frames that I've been a big fan of. All of them, like I will say, regardless of the frame, they're all very tough super functional and fashionable. And I don't just wear them on the range. I wear them every day. They've also come out with a bunch of different colors in their frames, as well as their lenses. My favorite is like the rainbow lens or just the solid black, but they have a bunch of others. And I do feel confident saying that if you guys buy them, they're not as inexpensive as a lot of glasses, but they definitely will last you a long time. And they're also made in America 100%. So if you use the URL gators.com forward slash Ava15, you will automatically get 15% off your entire order. So definitely check them out and protect those eyes, especially during the summer heat. And now it's time to wrap up. So you guys can find me at gunfunny.com. There's links to everything, including my Twitter, which I have to say, I've been very active on Twitter lately, especially since Facebook and Instagram just love to shadow ban me. Um, so if you guys have Twitter, I highly recommend following me. It's just Ava Flannel. That's one N two L's underscore. But to make it easy, you can go to gunfunny.com and there's links to all of my social media, including YouTube as well. And then if you guys enjoy the show and you want to support it, even if it's like $3 a month or a one-time donation, I would greatly appreciate it. You could do so by going to gunfunny.com and click on the support the show link. And then also want to thank the $25 patrons who are Stake Holsters, Daniel Treadwell, Keith Callamore, Daniel Lee, Nick Theodosian, Tristan Smith, Melissa Ridings, William Nave, and Patrick Comer. And then of course, King of the Patreon, Jon Snow. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing your story with us. It's really inspiring. And hopefully people, you know, it inspires people to put their foot down and and speak up as well. Because I think we're at a point now where America, you know, we need to take action. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. we are just we're constantly going downhill. We're we're basically like Joe Biden here and and we need <laughs> to pump the brakes. And so I do appreciate people who are outspoken like you and hopefully you know, it has encouraged others to do the same. Can you remind people once again, so your website, if they want to, you know, shop at your store, check out, you know, the fashion stuff, um, just follow you on social media, what is the best place to do that? Uh, Yeah, the best place to find me would be on patriotbarbie.com. It has all my links for all my businesses, all my Patriot partners, my books, my shop, everything. And then on Instagram is the.patriot.barbie. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. And guys, I will talk to you next week. Want to send feedback? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact.